are you talking about, Mama? Plants, Wolfie. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy, and in my channel, I talk about plants and my life and journey with my plants. I've chosen to film here, which I don't usually. This is the top floor of my house. Um, my house is kind of funny. It's kind of like a zigzag. Anyways, but that doesn't matter. What I meant to say is today is raining. Um, That's why I've chosen to film on the top floor of my house because the skylight is here. So hopefully you guys can hear a little bit of rain, but if not, it'll be, it's kind of nice for me to um, hear the rain too with the skylight right there. Um, but yeah, I keep a lot of plants up here because of the skylight and this is the only side of the house that's south facing. Um, all the other is kind of like north, east or west. Um, so I used a lot, of, I have to use a lot of grow light. Um, anyway, so today what I want to do is a plan update video. I think it's just kind of interesting to tell you guys a little bit of their journey and to show you what they look like. Why don't we just get started? We have quite a few different plants. We have an orchid, a succulent, uh, an alocasia, some philodendron, obviously. Oh yes. So why don't we start with an, um, a calathea. This is really like one of my favorite cal calatheas. It's called calathea vaginata. And I had, I got it as like a little tiny plant. And when I first got it, it was just like, like kind of like this pink color. It's just so adorable. But then, um, it, was attacked by thrips and it had to, I, a lot of my calatheas were attacked by thrips and because they were also kind of humidity loving plants and kind of fussy. So I gave up on a lot of them, except for um, this one and my orbifolia and another one. Uh, I kept some that I really, really love and this is one of them because it's just so beautiful. I've been keeping it in my cabinet and once in a while, I'll just like take it under the sink, rinse it out and like cat, try to catch um, any insects or pests to be like preventative. And now it has um, just grown into like a much bigger plant and it's really beautiful. <gasps> Why do I keep putting that leka back in when I know that it just is gonna keep falling back out? Anyway, so this one is a bit of a, I think a success story for me. Yeah. Let's hope the rest of the video will go sm smoother. Um, the second one I want to show you is, I don't know if you guys remember, so this is an update. Um, on my birthday, Tony gave me some Hoya cuttings um, and a couple of alocasia like bulbs that are, were not sprouted yet. This, no, this one had like a little bit of growth point, but it, had, it didn't have any leaves yet. I don't remember the name, I'll put the name on, on the screen, but it has started to grow. It is quite a stunning, why is it focusing on my face? Don't focus on my face, focus on the plant. Look, and it's, it has the second leaf coming too. So beautiful. I actually killed my alocasia um, gold, gold dragon. Yeah, so and this one reminds me a little bit of that one. So that's good. But yeah, I was really sad to lose that one. But anyway, so this one has grown out and it's very beautiful. Um, and since we're talking about alocasia, I want to show you guys, this alocasia is so gorgeous and it has come such a long way. It, um, I had it for a really long, for a while before I moved. And before I moved, I lived in a place where, where like I got lots of natural lights and it was like the top floor of a house, uh, apartment building. So it was really warm. And then I moved to this new home uh, late September, so it was cold already. And this home doesn't get a lot of natural light. And it was so cold. I could, because it's such an open concept and it's got three floor, it was really hard to keep, like maintain the heat of the home. So this alocasia just went dormant. It had root rot and it went dormant. So I took the bulb out and I cut out the rotted bits and I waited till it got warmer to replant it into my grow tent actually to get it to like start it. I could see that it was rooting. So I put it in my cabinet and then I don't know, I think I got root raw a couple times again. It didn't sprout for such, such a long time. And when it finally put out a new leaf, 
we had that heat wave and it just was burned to a crisp. So it was just so frustrating. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get this plant back, but I changed it out of uh, sphagnum moss into this new um, chunky cocoa husk chip in like soil and perlite and like warm casting um, soil mixture that my brother Tony kind of recommended and put it in my growth tent and within a short time it put out a leaf and then another leaf and another leaf. I think it got these three leaves within like a month or a little bit more than a month. And then this is what it is. This is my Alocasia Friedag or Friedag Variegata. Look at that. I am so, so happy that it came back. And this one, like a more mature leaf, look at the contrast, the dark color and the light color. Oh, it's so beautiful. I think this one will get darker too, is it? And it's so much bigger. This is the newest leaf. It's so much bigger than the, the first leaf. Oh, it's so pretty. And check out like the roots are so happy. It just loves the warmth in the grow tent and it really loves this new um, chunky it, like mixture, soil mixture that I have it in right now. So I actually, because of this one, I placed another one of my alocasia, I think Odora, into the grow tent and it was it had root rot and it's already now rooted and working on a new leaf. So I think for alocasia, I know a lot of people say light is the most important, but for me, I think it's the warmth. The warmth, um, they, yeah, they really appreciate the warmth. I have another alocasia uh, free deck that's not variegated, it has a different name. Um, that one, when I give it too much light, it gets really like, it gets burned really easily, so yeah. Anyways, I'm so proud of this one, so gorgeous. <laughs> anyway, so that's that one. Uh, the next one I want to show you guys is this uh, Asakulin. It's a Kalankoe copper spoon. It's one of my very favorite succulents. I love this one. It's so, it's like felt. When the Legend of Monstera asked if anybody wanted to like send him a clip talking about underrated plants and I talked about, I talked about like succulents and this is one of the plants that I highlighted in like his channel because I just think it's so gorgeous and it's so easy to care for. So this was actually a much longer plant. I, I tried to, I don't remember what the term was, but I tried to like cut it a little bit to see if I could stimulate, st st stimulate some growth. But instead of um, doing that, I accidentally just cut it right off. And I wasn't sure if this was gonna root. I think it, have, it has rooted because the leaves are so firm. So I put the top stem just right back in. And then look at this. The bottom stem that I cut, I, I, you know, the, the one that had roots, but like, what am I saying? It just has started to grow again, kind of like a, a philodendron would do that. I didn't realize that, um, succulents would do that too. I'm sure not all of them does the same thing, but I was just really happy that I didn't lose this plant. I just, because I love it so much. It's so gorgeous. There you go. So my, my goal was kind of achieved. I wanted more plant out of this plant. And even though I accidentally cut it off, I did end up with a new little guy here. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. That's that update. Another one update that I want to do with you guys is, um, I think this was also, no, this was not a birthday present, but Tony gave me a, a cutting of a skin dapsis. I don't remember which one it is. One of the more like harder to find one and uh, more expensive one. I think he got a, a couple leaf plant or something. He gave me a little chunk to root and I can see why this plant is a little bit more expensive because it took so, so long for it to like sprout one leaf and now finally it put out a new leaf. This is um, Skin Dapsis. I want to say Silver Lady. I really love Skin Dapsis. They're so beautiful. Um, but I don't know why this is so slow. Like I have the, 
What is this one called? Skin Dapses paint. Mm. Also don't remember, so cute. And then it grows so fast. And the Exotica that I have, also here, let me just grab it. <laughs> Ooh, I just water it, it's so heavy. It grows super well and so fast too. I don't know why this one's so slow. But look at the new leaf, it's so pretty and so silvery. I love it. I'm so glad that I have a brother who also loves plants and we could share cuttings. Since we're talking about me benefiting greatly from my brother sharing this hobby with me, why don't I show you the uh, New Guinea ghost that he gifted me for my birthday. Um, he gave me a cutting. It was quite a big cutting. And I was so scared about rooting it. What if it didn't root? Um, but it, the big cutting rooted and um, so because it's such a big cutting, I was kind of waiting for it to root so I could take another cutting from it and root that cutting so I could have a bigger plant. And sure enough, it did, it rooted. So, and the top cut, cutting actually had like a little bit of a, the aerial root was looking really white and fat. So it's kind of started to root already in the humidity of the cabinet. Um, so I took a cutting of that. And that one, I think, I think it has rooted now too. Oh yeah. <gasps> okay, well, I don't know if you guys can see. Anyway, so this is the plant. Gorgeous plant. I can't wait for it to like be really rooted so then I can put it under like stronger light to get a little bit of pink out of this plant. It's almost impossible to show you, but like I can see the new cutting has rooted out too. And like the original cutting, I can see a little bit of a new knob coming out, I think that's gonna be a new stem and it's ready to grow some um, new leaves. It's hard to see the, you can't really see the uh, roots from here because when I turned the one cutting into two cuttings, I put it into like more soil mixture and into a bigger pot. So it's hard, harder to see the roots at the moment, but I'm just really excited. Now, instead of one New Guinea ghost, I have a two. <laughs> And uh, I did kind of the same thing with um, the Matil Silver or Splash, but I didn't really wait. So I received it as a four leaf cutting. And right when I received it, because I just felt, I guess, overly, like pretty confident in my ability to root this plant, I took a cutting from that four leaf. So it's got like one pair and then another pair. I just took a cutting and just plucked it into my the soil I was gonna plant it anyway. So one was rooted and one wasn't. Uh, and let me show you. This is the plant, it's so beautiful. So this is the cutting that had roots and it already put out one new leaf and it's working on this, like these two, two new leaves and a stem. And next to it, this is the cutting that I took and you can see right over here, it's already rooted and putting out this new stamp, so I am so excited. I just hope that they produce as like splashy leaves as the seller um, grew them. She did tell me like um, the key to having beautiful splashes is um, temperature difference between day and night. So um, maybe during the winter time, I will see more splashy leaves, but yeah, I'm just really happy with this one. Okay, oh, another Hoya I want to show you. I don't know if you guys share the same like observation with me, but this Hoya, I feel like online, I either see people say uh, like, it's the easiest thing to grow ever. It grows like weed. And then they just take out this like totem of a Hoya that's like so big that they, they don't know what to do with. Or people saying, sharing the same experience as me that it just, so hard to take care of and it just like rots so easily um anyway so the hoya that i'm talking about is australis lisa it's such a beautiful hoya and i have admired it from the very beginning of my collecting hoyas i have ordered one from the uk and uh, just i've tried multiple times with this hoya and every time it would just decline and and it'll put out a couple new leaves and it's just like it won't it just wouldn't do well for me and i don't know what to do with it um 
Anyway, so I had recently, this one had recently just, I found out it was completely rotted. So I had to like reroute it from scratch and I'm using, I think the, like, yeah, a lot of like cocoa husk and the cocoa husk chips and soil and warm casting and perlite and uh, check out how much it's rerouted within, I would say a month. Look at that. I'm so happy to see this. And I'm so happy that I'm using a plastic, like see-through cup that I could see the progress. So even if like, the, it's not doing a lot of growth um, up top, I can see that it really loves its uh, new home. Yeah, so this one has really happily rerouted and I'm really happy to see that. Hopefully, It'll put out some new leaves. It's the most fun to see them have new leaves because they're so red. And then they like fade into a pink and then this beautiful yellow creamy color leaves. Yeah, that makes, that one's really, really, I'm happy. Um, the next one I'm going to show you, remember a while back I did like a Crystal Star Nursery. Um, it wasn't unboxing, but just to show you what I got from Crystal Star Nursery. And one of them was like a variegated orchid. It's called Sogo Vivian Super Variegata. And I just was, I wanted it because I admired the, the leaves so much. The variegation is just so strong and so beautiful. Um, but it didn't have a flower spike. And, and then it ended up, you know, spiking. And now it's working on its blooms. And I just want to show you that plant. Look at those leaves. Aren't they so beautiful? I'm just so succulent. I think it's time to water it. But here is the, the blooms. Just so many flower buds. To be honest with you, like if this is an orchid uh, with green leaves, and <laughs> this is the flower, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. I'm not too, too attracted to to this flower, I'm just really happy that it's flowering, but but with the flat, beautiful flowers and the stunning leaves, I think it makes it like an outstanding specimen. Isn't that so beautiful? Okay. So the next one I wanna tell you guys about, this is a not so great um, story. I repotted my uh, philodendron sauteri. And during my repot, I noticed that it's got like a long stem that I'm able, and with many nodes that I could cut up. So I actually took three nodes off of the bottom and the top cutting still has like a lot of roots. Uh, so, so I gifted one node to Tony and it already started to grow. grow. So he's going to have a sauteroid, which, you know, it's not, not the easiest plant to, to find or like it, it could be quite expensive. So I'm happy that I'm able to share that with him. And, uh, but, so this is my, my um, Sauteroy. I really love this plant and I've, I got it as a one leaf plant with like root rot. So I'm really proud of it. Um, but because I think it's because I took the cuttings and it had the repotting, um, which, you know, I think the roots are doing okay. You can, I don't know if you, you can kind of see that it's starting to root into the new soil. So the roots are okay. But the, there was a new leaf that was like not unfurled yet when I was doing, uh, when I took all the notes from the plant. And look at the leaf when it, after it's unfurled. It's not done growing yet, but it just looks like something's wrong with it. And I really, I check for pets. I don't see any thrips and i mean i know my thrips <laughs> yeah so i think this is due to me cutting the notes out and just stressing out the plant so much that it just looks so weird after it's unfurled so we'll just have to keep an eye out on this one and see like how the next few leaves do when they come out yeah i hope it bounces back to um it's original glory. 
This is, I think this is my favorite leaf on this plant. It's got that, a little bit of curve, but this, this will be the second newest leaf. There you go. So I forgot to um, bring this one to show you guys. I don't know if you guys remember, but I, um, last year when I moved to this place, again, it was so cold. So, so many of my alocasias, I guess I was saying that earlier, went dormant and I kept all the bulbs and I had like multiple bulbs of the free deck and I planted them and they have just sprouted and have just been keep growing into like such a big few beautiful full plant and it's like still growing little bits and i have gifted some to my friends so this is a, i definitely am super happy with this plant and it's just like i love the dark color and this one i actually find it a little bit tricky to get the lighting right uh, when it has too much light it kind of gets um, burned a little bit like that and uh, when the weather gets a little bit colder I don't think I'm gonna keep it outside I think I want to I'm gonna want to bring it into the grow tent but I'm a little bit afraid because it's with so many other plants that it may have a possibility of being a carrier of safe thrips into my grow tent so I'm going to really clean this one up and when the temperature really drops down then I will move it into a warmer area Another update I could give you is, um, this is my philodendron D McDowell. And I just find that it's um, not very happy. So again, like the solder, I, I took a cutting of it, a chunk out of it. So the new growth has turned into really like much, much smaller than the old growth. But the chunk that I have taken from it has, uh, I kept it in my cabinet to root and sprout and it has started to grow can you see clearly i don't know if it's not focusing uh, it has this one growth point and actually it has two growth points so hopefully this will help it become a fuller plant and i think as long as i stop disturbing it within a few more leaves um, it should the size should start to catch up again i think um, and another thing I want to tell you guys about this one, I totally forgot. But a while ago, my Anthurium forgetii and my Anthurium uh, magnificum were both flowering. So I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I tried pollinating and I got lots of berries. And I just put the berries into like sphagnum, the, the seeds that popped out of the berries into sphagnum moss and in the prop box and they have started to sprout there this one is so, it's so cute i have so many of them and i really don't know if they're going to turn into plants but it'll just be kind of interesting to uh, witness the process success or fail this has been pretty fun to to do last but not least <laughs> this update I want to do is my Sissus Discolor. So it wasn't doing very well to begin with. And a friend from Instagram suggested that I trellis it. Uh, once it's gotten something to crawl or like cling onto, it will start to grow better. But I guess I did it without really thinking that the window is this way. There is no way the plant is gonna want to start climbing that way where it is only like a little, little meager light bulb uh, source of light for them. So it has been dwindling here. I'm not sure if it's gonna adapt. I, I think it prefers much, much more light. So either I provide more light uh, via grow light or I'll have to change the situation up. But yeah, this, ha this change has definitely been a fail. Okay, I think we've been at this for oh, 20 minutes now so i'm gonna end the video here um thank you guys so much for letting me hang out with you i hope you enjoy me kind of just telling you some stories about these plants um i want to oh some questions to ask you guys so i want to make a video of like the things i love using for my plants um i, I always enjoy watching those videos so like let me know if, is it, if there's anything in particular you want me to talk about 
And another video that I want to film is um, I want to interview Tony for his like plant tips or Hoya care tips because he really has a lot of success taking care of them. Um, so I think there's a lot to that he could share with us that might be helpful. Um, so let me know if you have any questions in particular you like him to to answer and I can add that into the video when we get to it. All right, guys, that's all from me today. Um, thank you again so much for being here and I will see you again soon. Bye.